What's up guys, welcome to Plot Twist. The Pawn Stars have been in the pawning game for decades now, and their status in the pawning community is nothing more than legendary. However, they didn't get there by making perfect deals left and right. Every member of the Harrison family has been scammed in some bad deals throughout the years, but in some instances they were cheated so badly that it's hard to ignore. Some of their mistakes were so terrible that they costed the shop thousands upon thousands of dollars. So we've compiled a list of some of the worst pawning mistakes the Pawn Stars have ever made. Here are a few times where the Pawn Stars were scammed. Before we get started though, make sure to leave a comment down below. Who's your favorite Pawn Star or member of the Harrison family? Also, don't forget to subscribe, that way you enter in in our monthly shoutout giveaway. It's become a very well-known fact that when Chumley makes purchases for gold and silver, they're often bad ones. And this particular instance is no exception. A guy brought in a Gibson mandolin while Rick, Corey, and the old man were out of the shop. So Chum Lee had to make do with his knowledge of guitars in the Gibson brand. His understanding of the seemingly beautiful instrument was that it was authentic. It had all of the right logos and decals on it, and it was in great condition. So Chum Lee decided he was willing to leave his $1,000 spending limit at the door, and the deal ended up costing him $1,000. $500. Once Chum Lee had finalized the purchase, he was beyond excited to show his family such an amazing find. But after taking it to a guitar expert, his hopes were shattered. It turns out the mandolin had all the wrong markings on it. It had a very weak plastic finish and had a pickguard Gibson never even used. When all was said and done, the item was only worth about $100. Talk about a scam. Here's a clip. Gibson, mandolin. Mind if I play a couple tones? Sure, absolutely. There's a couple things here. The decal, you can see where it was cut out with some scissors. Yeah. This is fake as hell, man. This is... <laughs> Old sports jerseys from back in the day are often very rare finds. No one back then thought to keep them, or even keep them in a good condition if they weren't discarded. Because of this, a pristine, authentic jersey from back in the day can be worth a lot of money. In this particular instance, this guy brought in what he claimed to be a real Willie Mays jersey into the shop. He claimed he received it from an old family member, and that he believed it was legit. At first, all of the evidence pointed towards it being real, but the fact that it wasn't game-worn really brought its legitness into question. Eventually, they brought in an expert to review it, and even he claimed it was the real deal, and that it was easily worth between $30,000 and $40,000. After some haggling, the final cost of $31,000 was agreed upon, but after the deal was finished, they double-checked the jersey and discovered that it was 100% fake. It looks like the lack of wear and tear really was a red flag. Here's a clip of this frustrating mistake. I got a 61 uh, Willie Mays uniform. I got this jersey with the matching pants underneath. Shoeless Joe Jackson is one of the most famous baseball players in the world. He was so unbelievably great at the game that even Babe Ruth took after him. So when this guy brought a copy of the book, Say It Ain't So Joe, that was signed by the man himself into the shop, Rick was incredibly interested. An authentic Joe Jackson signature is one of the rarest signatures you can get in baseball, and it's all due to him being somewhat illiterate. Due to this, all of his autographs were signed by his wife, so his genuine signature is 
very hard to find. Once the bargaining phase of the pawn had ended, Rick handed over a solid $13,000 for the item. For something as rare as a Joe Jackson signature, that was a pretty good deal. However, after the deal had already transpired, an authenticator was brought into the pawn shop off camera to reveal the item's true worth. It turns out it was definitely a fake. Either the guy who brought it in did this intentionally to scam the Pawn Stars, or maybe he genuinely had no idea what he was talking about. Nonetheless, here's a clip. I have a book signed by Shoeless Joe Jackson. Oh, it's actually signed by him. Right. This is absolutely incredible. Wells Fargo, when they were still an express shipping company, would deliver various goods across the United States. When they would transport things like gold and silver, it would be kept in strong boxes. And one of these strong boxes made its way into the gold and silver pawn shop. Its owner brought it in filled with 200-year-old balls and chains from different American prisons, which he had hoped would have been the main selling point of the pawn. However, Rick noticed very quickly that each link of the chain was welded together through modern methods, and the balls attached were marked with the prisons they belonged to, which was a practice that was never done when balls and chains like these would have been used. Due to this, Rick's main focus was the strong box. He believed it was authentic, but boy, was he wrong. Before Rick could realize his mistake, he had already forked over $450 for it. After this transaction, he called in an expert to verify if it was legit, and lo and behold, it was a fake. Here's a clip. What do we have here? Well, we got a Wells Fargo strong box and some antique ball and chain. I don't have good news for you. This is a complete fantasy piece. It's a complete fake. Most of the items that enter gold and silver are anywhere between 50 to 200 years old, but this ancient book was from almost 400 years ago. It's an extremely rare book about alchemy that according to the man who brought it in was used by Isaac Newton himself. Both Rick and Chum Lee were interested in the item, but due to their lack of knowledge on the subject, they brought in an expert to help them out. Once the expert got her hands on the book, she instantly recognized it. She started by saying that there were a lot of fakes of this book out there, but that a real, authentic copy would sell for at least $30,000. The final deal that everyone agreed on was $10,300, which the man who brought the item in was beyond happy to take. I wonder why. Later on, the book was double-checked for its legitimacy, and sadly, it was fake. Imagine being scammed out of over $10,000. That's gotta suck. I have a 1652 copy of Elias Ashmole's Theatrum Chemicum Britannicum. In it is the secret to creating the Philosopher's Stone. 